Hey coders, welcome back to the full app walkthrough series. We last left off with our login page, correctly console logging a token result when we make a post request to log in. We had tried it with hard coding an email and a password and we made our text inputs have on change text handlers where we had that very handy text argument we could use for our set state to make it very easy to handle these things. Um, and we had it working in console logging the result. And here today we're going to be talking about something called async storage. If you've been following the curriculum up until this point, you've used local storage in our auth series video where we discuss how to use local storage on browsers to persist a login. We're going to be doing something similar and async storage has some similar syntax to local storage, but there's a couple key differences we'll be discussing. What's cool about it and it's different about it as well, especially it's async storage as the name applies. It's asynchronous in nature. It is unencrypted, so we as users and developers can easily see without having to jump through a bunch of um, hoops to see what the object looks like and make sure it's formatted correctly so we can utilize it in our application. What's really cool about its persistence as well is that if you update or you know, um, shut down the app and then reopen it, it will persist its information. It'll go through all that kind of phase, those things. The only way it will fail is if you actually delete the app, and then the async storage for that native app is also deleted. So it's really cool in how long it can persist and go across a phone's life cycle. So ultimately, if you wanted to have someone permanently logged in, if they've logged in one time, you are free to do so. As long as they don't delete the app, they will always have that token stored in async storage. On the flip side of things, if you want to expire that token in your backend with some backend logic, you can also kick people out daily, weekly, monthly, whatever you decide to do. So let's go ahead and begin wiring this guy up. We started out with our console log result, which we know had our token, a role, and a user ID. I'm going to be heading into my API.ts, where our utility work is going to be happening. Before we get started here, um, I'm going to remember to import from React Native the async storage module. There we go, or component or set of functions, what have you. And we now have to start building it out. So let's say we begin talking about our export consts. We can call it something like um, set access token. And this will be the purpose of setting the token. It's going to be an asynchronous function because we have to await our async storage to do its thing. We're going to be passing in our token as a string and we'll be passing in a user object from our token response, from our uh, login response rather, which will be an object that will have some defaults of user ID undefined role guest. There we go. I think admin is my default one for my database response. We'll do that for now. And that will be a function, an arrow function that will, let's see, it's going to be awaiting async storage to do a set item. And you actually have to set an item with a key and some value. So if you're doing just a string or flat value, you can just run one of these. Await async storage dot set item token comma token. It'll set a property called token with a value of the string token. What you will have to do for usage with more nested objects, so let's say we wanted to have our user property in async storage be the user object. Just writing this, I believe, will throw an error as you cannot assign type object to a string value for this. So we can flatten this object, this nested object, into a string using our handy dandy buddy, json.stringify. So now we can flatten that user object into a JSON string, set it to a property called user, and we'll have to remember, I believe, to parse this user, um, this user string into a regular object that we can manipulate in our JavaScript code, or our TypeScript code, rather. And that should about do it. That's all we're going to need to do. It should look, should look very similar to what we've already done in the curriculum at this point with using the uh, this and auth and local storage. Um, we also had some other utilities in our old api.ts where we would be needing to get an access token. So in order to do that, we could just literally call local storage in our older examples, but this time we're actually gonna have to do an asynchronous function that will run our, let's see, nope. It's going to, fat fingering, IntelliSense is always fun. Grab our token, we'll make it any for now, even though I believe it should be eventually a string of some type dot get item and we have to get item by its property name and we called it token when we set it 
So that's where I'm getting that information from. Once that promise resolves, we should hopefully have a token. And because we didn't stringify it, it's just a plain string, we should be able to just return token. And we could probably simplify this into one line if you wanted to. We can just return await async storage get atom token. Okay, and we need one more where we have to potentially get a user's information, right? So this is where we would write our async function called get user that will retrieve a user from async storage. User any equal await async storage dot get item get item and we're going to grab our user and this is where I mentioned that before you return just the plain user we're going to want to do a JSON dot parse the opposite of stringify to convert that JSON string into a JavaScript object that we as developers can manipulate on the other end of our application. And I believe that's all we're going to need here, right? So it's a, the very, very similar logic to your local storage usage in browser, except this is now asynchronous. It's a promise. And we have to also account for flattening a nested object into a string, right? Into a JSON string and parsing it on the other end. So with that little refactor, let's jump back on into our login.tsx, where we're going to, instead of just console logging the result of my login, Instead, let's just say if a result comes back, meaning it is a valid login, we want it to await set access token, and hopefully it imported it correctly up here. If not, let me go ahead and do an async storage. No, not async storage. Set access token. Oh, it did. Okay. Okay. Good, 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 good. It did a set access token import up there, and it's going to need to set our token. So we're going to pass in our results.token. And we're going to say an object is going to have user ID, which should be result.user ID, and a role of result.user. Dot, or dot role. There we go. So we're going to set our access token and allow that promise to fulfill and complete itself. And then, if you want, you can run a test where you get a user or something like that, right? So we can say maybe like let user equal await get user get user and hopefully that function will run and complete and get a the user object this way it's a good test to know if we did the right process of adding it to async storage stringifying it parsing it and getting a user object that we as developers can use right so we can say if the user exists and oops, and we want to say if the user dot role is say admin, which my server should respond with, I'm going to want to navigate maybe back to the home screen. That way, if this logic works, we know it is correct. Otherwise, if there's no result. Maybe we can alert something like invalid credentials, just telling it, hey, you might want to check your email and password. Maybe something went wrong in that process there. Otherwise, we want to navigate to, let's say, the all blog screen. So a successful login should hopefully allow us to log in and go back to like the main screen or maybe move to an admin or user profile screen. I'm just going to hard code it to go back to the all blog screen as a confirmation and test. We're also going to console log the user to confirm and make sure that this logic is going to work correctly. I'm going to need to bring in my navigation screen props. Boom, and type my interface with it as well. Extends navigation screen props. That way we have access to our buddy this dot props dot navigation dot navigate, and it takes a string value of a screen name, and we have one called all blogs. Okay, that was a cool little refactor to our login screen to allow to do some programmatic navigating based on a successful login, and we can also come in here and even say maybe we have an um, like a, a, a async component will mount where maybe we try and see and get a token and say if the token exists, they probably shouldn't be able to go to the login screen and log in again. It could maybe forcefully navigate them directly to their user profile page or somewhere else. That way they can't accidentally keep logging in multiple times because that would make for good user experience. But for this demo, we're going to keep it a bit shorter since the last video ran very long. <laughs> I'm going to come here and hard code refresh my simulator and my react native code on my console is hooked up and running in the background correctly and let's see what happens if we do a successful login 
So just like before, I'm going to log in to my deployed API and let's see what happens. Awesome. It navigated automatically to the all blogs page. So we know that got generated correctly. I did a get user and I console log the user as a test to show you how it's working. So it also has the token stored back there and it has this user object and we stringified it to flatten it to make sure it's stored in the async storage correctly. And then we parsed it on the return to make sure that we can use it in our logic. So I can say if user dot role is admin, let's navigate them back to that screen. Cool. All right, so that should wrap it up for this video on how to use async storage to persist a login. We'll be going a little bit further and filling out our, um, maybe a registration page, a user profile page potentially, and also adding in how to um, make, a, make a new blog post from this app if that's what you wanna do. And we're gonna continue building out our application in full. So we'll see you all in the next video.